a few days after the encounter with the enemies of Terabithia, they had an encounter of a different sort at school. Leslie came out at recess to tell Jess that she had started into the girls' room, only to be stopped by the sound of crying from one of the stalls. She lowered her voice. This sounds crazy, she said, but from the feet, I'm sure it's Janice Avery in there. You're kidding. The picture of Janice Avery crying on the toilet seat was too much for Jess to imagine. Well, she's the only one in school that has Willard Hughes's name crossed out on her sneakers. Besides, the smoke is so thick in there you need a gas mask. Are you sure she was crying? Jess Aarons, I can tell if someone's crying or not. Lord, what was the matter with him? Janice Avery had given him nothing but trouble, and now he was feeling responsible for her like one of the Burke's timber wolves or beached whales. She didn't even cry when kids teased her about Willard after the note. Yeah, I know. He looked at her. Well, he said, what should we do? Do? she asked. What do you mean, what should we do? How could he explain it to her? Leslie. If she was an animal predator, we'd be obligated to try to help her. Leslie gave him a funny look. Well, you're the one who's always telling me I gotta care, he said. But Janice Avery? If she's crying, there gotta be something really wrong. Well, what are you planning to do? He flushed. I can't go into no girl's room. Oh, I get it. You're going to send me into the shark's jaws. No thank you, Mr. Aarons. Leslie, I swear. I'd go in there if I could. He really thought he would, too. You ain't scared of her, are you, Leslie? He didn't mean it in a daring way. He was just dumbfounded by the idea of Leslie being scared. She flashed her eyes at him and tossed her head back in that proud way she had. <sighs> okay, I'm going in. But I want you to know, Jess Aarons, I think it's the dumbest idea you've ever had in your life. He crept down the hall after her and hid behind the nearest alcove to the girl's room door. He ought at least to be there to catch her when Janice kicked her out. There was a quiet minute after the door swung shut behind Leslie. Then he heard Leslie saying something to Janice. Next, a string of cuss words which were too loud to be blurred by the closed door. This was followed by some loud sobbing, not Leslie's, thank the Lord, and some sobbing and talking mixed up and the bell. He couldn't be caught staring at the door of the girls' room, but how could he leave? He'd be deserting in the line of fire, the rush of kids into the building settled it. He let himself be caught up in the stream and made his way to the basement steps, his brain still swirling with the sounds of cussing and sobbing. Back in the fifth grade classroom, he kept his eyes glued on the door for Leslie. He half expected to see her come through, flat and straight out, like the coyote on Roadrunner. But she came in smiling without so much as a black eye. She waltzed over to Mrs. Myers and whispered her excuse for being late, and Mrs. Myers beamed at her with what was becoming known as the Leslie Burke special. How was he supposed to find out what had happened? If he tried to pass a note, the other kids would read it. Leslie sat way up in the front corner, nowhere near the wastebasket or pencil sharpener, so there was no way he could pretend to be heading somewhere else and sneak a word with her. And she wasn't moving in his direction, that was for sure. She was sitting straight up in her seat, looking as pleased with herself as a motorcycle rider who just made it over 14 trucks. Leslie smirked clear through the afternoon and right onto the bus where Janice Avery gave her a little crooked smile on the way to the back seat, and Leslie looked over at Jess as if to say, see? He was going crazy wanting to know. She even put him off after the bus pulled away, pointing her head at Maybell, as if to say, we shouldn't discuss it in front of the children. Finally, finally, in the safe darkness of the stronghold, she told him, do you want to know why she was crying? How am I supposed to know? Lord Leslie, will you tell me? What in the heck was going on in there? Janice Avery is a very unfortunate person. Do you realize that? What was she crying about, for heaven's sake? It's a very complicated situation. I can understand now why Janice has so many problems relating to people. Will you tell me what happened before I have a hernia? 
Did you know her father beats her? Lots of kids' fathers beat him. Will you get on with it? No. I mean, really beats her. The kind of beatings they take people to jail for in Arlington. She shook her head in disbelief. You can't imagine. Is that why she was crying? Just because her father beats her? Oh, no. She gets beaten up all the time. She wouldn't cry at school about that. Then what was she crying for? Well, Lord, Leslie was loving this. She'd string him out forever. Well, today she was so mad at her father that she told her so-called friends, Wilma and Bobby Sue, about it. Yeah? And those two... two... She looked for a word, vile enough, to describe Janice Avery's friends and found none. Those two girls blabbed it all over the seventh grade. Pity for Janice Avery swept across him. Even the teacher knows about it. Boy. The word came out like a sigh. There was a rule at Lark Creek, more important than anything Mr. Turner made up and fussed about. That was the rule that you never mixed up troubles at home with life at school. When parents were poor or ignorant or mean, or even just didn't believe in having a TV set, it was up to their kids to protect them. By tomorrow, every kid and teacher in Lark Creek Elementary would be talking in half-snickers about Janice Avery's daddy. It didn't matter if their own fathers were in the state hospital or the federal prison. They hadn't betrayed theirs, and Janice had. Do you know what else? What? I told Janice about not having a TV, and everyone laughing. I told her I understood what it was like to have everyone think I was weird. What'd she say to that? She knew I was telling the truth. She even asked me for advice, as if I was Dear Abby. Yeah? I told her just to pretend she didn't know what on earth Wilma and Bobby Sue had said, or where they had gotten such a crazy story, and everybody would just forget about it in a week. She leaned forward, suddenly anxious. Do you think that was good advice? Lord, how should I know? Make her feel better? I think so. She seemed to feel a lot better. Well, it was great advice then. She leaned back, happy and relaxed. Know what, Jess? What? Thanks to you, I think I now have one and a half friends at Lark Creek School. It hurt him for it to mean so much to Leslie to have friends. When would she learn they weren't worth her trouble? Oh, you got more friends than that. Nope. One and a half. Monster Mouth Myers doesn't count. There in their secret place, his feelings bubbled inside him, like a stew on the back of the stove. Some sad for her, in her lonesomeness, but chunks of happiness too. To be able to be Leslie's one whole friend in the world, as she was his, he couldn't help being satisfied about that. That night, as he started to get into bed, leaving the light off so as not to wake the little girls, he was surprised by Maybelle's shrill little, Jess, how come you still awake? Jess, I know where you and Leslie go to hide. What do you mean? I followed you. He was at her bedside in one leap. You ain't supposed to follow me. How come? Her voice was sassy. He grabbed her shoulders and made her look him in the face. She blinked in the dim light like a startled chicken. You listen here, Maybelle Ahrens, he whispered fiercely. I catch you following me again. Your life ain't worth nothing. Okay, okay, she slid back into the bed. Boy, you're mean. I had to tell Mama on you. Look, Maybelle, you can't do that. You can't tell Mama about where me and Leslie go. She answered with a little sniffing sound. He grabbed her shoulders again. He was desperate. I mean it, Mabel. You can't tell nobody nothing. He let her go. Now, I don't want to hear about you following me or squealing to Mama ever again, you hear? Why not? Because if you do, I'm going to tell Billie Jean Edwards you still wet the bed sometimes. You wouldn't, boy, girl. You just better not try me. He made her swear on the Bible never to tell and never to follow but still he lay awake a long time. How could he trust everything that mattered to him to a sassy six-year-old? Sometimes it seemed to him that his life was delicate as a dandelion, one little puff from any direction, and it was blown to bits.